In today's lesson, we're going to look at what happens when the supply and demand curves meet on the same graph. This is called market equilibrium, and for my students, I number the graphs as we go through IB Interna or International Baccalaureate Economics. Uh, so we're on graph number five of our year one course. What you'll want to have a good understanding of before this is the law of supply and the supply curve and the law of demand and the demand curve, which hopefully you will have seen before you look at this video. In my class, I've done a simulation with students where we look at the individual consumers buying ice cream sundaes and the individual producers selling ice cream sundaes and what a market equilibrium price might be for that good in a certain scenario. In this case, I am using data from my classes where they found that given the variables I had set up, the equilibrium price for an ice cream sundae is somewhere around $3.50. Now, I have the price on the vertical axis in, in dollars, in US dollars. Uh, on the horizontal axis, I just made up a, a value here that makes uh, talking about this graph make a little bit more sense. In this case, 1,100 ice cream sundaes being bought and sold at that price per month. Now, when you graph the two supply and demand curves together on the same graph, you will always see that the price, or that there should be an intersection between the two lines. This intersection is very important. It's called the equilibrium point. It's at this point that the markets operate efficiently, and you'll learn a little bit later that this is productive and allocative efficiency at this price. Uh, if you remember from your law of supply and law of demand, that at this given price, the market will both demand a certain quantity and supply a certain quantity. And since both the supply and demand curves intersect here, the quantity that's being supplied and demanded is 1100 ice cream sundaes per month. Now that's wonderful when this happens and this is really the reason that we study microeconomics to see how supply and demand interact and how with a free market in a perfectly competitive market these forces work together. The notes on the left hand side give us some detail about where we're headed so please pay attention to that and make sure they get added to your notebook. Let's say uh, some outside force keeps the market from working efficiently and since the price of ice cream sundae is at $2, what happens if the market sets the price arbitrarily low at $2? Let's just highlight what would occur at that price point. At that price point, we can see the $2 price intersects the supply curve and gives us a quantity supplied of 400 ice cream cones or ice cream sundaes. And it intersects the demand curve at, uh, counting it out, it would be about 1850, 1850 quantity demanded. If the price that is arbitrarily set is below the equilibrium level, it's below the $3.50 set by the market, we will have a situation where the, the price will have a higher quantity demanded than quantity supplied. Quantity demanded greater than quantity supplied at that price because there's 1,850 ice cream sundaes being created or being demanded whereas producers only want to produce 400. In this case when there's more demanded than supplied, more quantity demanded than quantity supplied, it gives us an excess demand or more commonly called a shortage. Let's take a look at what happens when the price is too high. If the price is set in the marketplace too high, let's assume that price is $5. Then you see that at that new price, it intersects the quantity demanded or the demand curve at a very, very low quantity value and the supply curve at a very, very high quantity value. We see an intersection of the demand curve. We see quantity demanded in this case of about 450 ice cream sundaes when the price is very high. And if we count out the quantity supplied, is about 1,700 ice cream sundaes supplied at that price. So this is actually the opposite of the scenario we just had. The quantity supplied now is greater than the quantity demanded. When the quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded, there's a surplus of goods in the marketplace. If, the, if there's an outside force that sets the price too high, there's going to be more ice cream sundae is being created and not enough being sold. In this case, we have 1,700 supplied 
the 450 sold at that price or de demand quantity demanded at that price. So there's excess supply. There's an extra surplus in the marketplace. Another really important interpretation that we can take forth from this graph is what happens now when a non-price determinant would either shift the demand or the supply curve to the left or to the right. Again, you should have seen this when you looked at the law of demand or the law of supply curves individually. But let's just pick on or let's just move one of the curves right now. But really, you could look at the possible combinations of either curve increasing or decreasing. So I want to show you one, but please know there are multiple ways that if the curve increases or decreases that you would see. If you think about the non-price determinants of demand, one thing that could increase demand for ice cream sundaes or decrease demand for ice cream sundaes is whether or not uh, tasting preferences for that particular good um, change because of something going on in the marketplace. Let's presume that we're in the middle of a heat wave. It's very hot outside. Uh, the demand for ice cream sundaes would probably go up as when it's warm out, people demand more of this satisfying and cool treat. If the curve shifts to the right because of an increase in demand, at the original market equilibrium price, 1,100 ice cream sundaes were being produced at $3.50. If nothing else changes except for this shift in demand, I want you to see what would happen at this value. If we kept the original equilibrium price of $3.50, there is now an excess demand because the whole demand curve shifted out. There's an excess demand because now oh, 1,900 individuals are going to demand that good because the, intersect, the, the original price would intersect the demand curve at this point where only 1,100 more producers were supplying that good. If nothing else changes except this signal in the marketplace that there's now a heat wave, if that only the signal changes, then there's going to be a huge shortage of ice cream sundaes being sold. There's only 1,100 available in the marketplace. Now, the factors that affect a shift in one of the two curves is a signal to the rest of the marketplace that something has changed. So all those non-price determinants that we looked at that shift the demand or the supply curve are signals. In this case, the heat wave was the signal that affected the taste and preferences of consumers for ice cream sundaes per month. That signal creates either a surplus or a shortage at the original equilibrium price. But as we can see, a new equilibrium price and quantity is suggested by the intersection of these lines. I would like you to be very careful though, although that change is pretty immediate, although those factors affect things pretty quickly, I want you to understand there's a signal that first takes place and then both producers and consumers are incentivized to change their demands or change their willingness and ability to buy and sell at a different price, to a different price. So if at the original equilibrium price of $3.50, nothing else changes except for that signal and our new demand curve, then there would be a shortage, there'd be an excess demand of ice cream sundaes at that price. However, if consumers are willing and able to pay a higher price, however, if consumers are willing and able to pay a higher price, and producers are willing and able to pay a higher price, both consumers and producers can win. See, let's see what happens. At a, with this new equilibrium price, ice cream sundaes now, during the heat wave, might be bought and sold for $4.50. That is clearly an incentive to producers. They can produce more ice cream sundaes at a higher price and make more revenue. But how does this benefit producers? Or how does this benefit consumers? Please note that the notation here is PE1. We had an original equilibrium level of PE and QE, but now we have a new equilibrium level of PE1 and QE1. So producers get a higher price and quantity because they move to this new, uh, new price point. The incentive for producers is if you raise your price, you can sell more goods because of this excess demand. What do consumers get out of it though? A lot of students struggle with the fact that consumers benefit from this relationship too. 
So why do consumers willingly and willingly submit to a higher price in the market? Well, please remember that at $3.50, the best quantity available at that price point was 1,100 ice cream sundaes. Why would some consumers be willing and able to pay more? If consumers are willing and able to pay more, look how much more is available in the marketplace. Some consumers are going to be willing and able to pay more, satisfying or removing the excess demand from the marketplace. If the consumers move to a higher price point, there's more ice cream sundaes available, 1,520. Whereas before, if nothing else changes, there's only 1,100. So, another important concept to remember when looking at market equilibrium. When you have a shift in either the demand or the supply curve, there's always a signal that indicates there's a shift. But the second component of that then is that there's always an incentive to both the producers and the consumers for raising or lowering to a new price and quantity level in the market. This gives you a brief introduction into how markets operate. You will see this through multiple more, exa multiple more examples and begin to understand later on with market failure the logic of why governments might set a higher or lower price than is demanded in the marketplace.